I've worn out those tools, that's what I want. Today I'm just going to go through my bivvy bag camping setup. Um, I've had a few questions about my recent kit, the stuff I've been buying, and uh, a lot of private messages about the kit I was using on that uh, bivvy bag um, video. There's a lot of interest in that one, a lot of praise for it, so thanks for that. So I'd like to go through it. What I was going to do is go through my setup and then show you in action, but as you might have seen from my last video, the stags are all around that. Uh, my proving area if you like um, it's a place where I'm buying a lot of new kits up to try it out before I venture further um, and also having that kit failure last time has made, knocked my confidence a little bit so I wanted to get another one in there before I start taking train journeys and things like that to the, uh, the higher peaks and things like that so um, the kit setup I was like I said I was going to do I got it all ready but I looked online and that stag um, rutting season they're still doing tours up there till about the f uh, 5th of November so when it actually ends I don't know but it's going to be a long a long while yet so I thought to fill the gap and get a video done with my gear talk through what I've got um, the weights and things like that because it's a regular question how much are you carrying what are you using and things like that so um, I'll walk through it step by step and hopefully try and cram it into a pretty good video um, let's get started Okay, so this is the pack. Are we using the Montaigne Grand Tour 55? These don't come with the rain cover, so I've borrowed it from the Osprey. I've got a couple of rain covers, but none of them seem to fit. It's just that wrong size for it. Great fit in this. Um, on the downside that some people may find about it is that there's no ventilation system at the back. But I have tried them, and my back sweats whether or not there's one there or not. If I'm, you know, if it's quite warm weather and I'm doing up and down hills and things like that, so. I really don't consider it a, a big fault on the bag. Um, supports are brilliant on the straps. Um, seems hard wearing. It's only had two or three trips, or three trips now, so it's uh, not had that much. But so far, very impressed with this. They were quite dear to start with, but now you can find them um, sub one hundred pounds, which is a lot. But still, I think it was worth it, and I'm happy with it. Nice and lots of compression straps, side pockets, and a nice back. They don't do anything those vents. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do before we start, each and every bit of this kit is mine and I've paid for it. I've never been given anything for the purposes of a video for promotion or things like that. I'm not against it but I don't do it, it's just everything you'll see in this one is bought by me or it's been traded or friends and things like that so um, I'll take you through the bits of gear. Well first what I'll do is I'll, I'll weigh it I think. There is an extra jacket in here. There may be a few extra things compared to my last baby camp, but uh, I'm sure it was about 10 kilograms on the last one. This has got food in. What's that? It's a smidge over 11, so I'd say 11 kilograms. My food's in there, but my water isn't. So you're looking at 13 kilograms for my setup. Okay, so on the outside, we've got two match pockets. This side, a windproof shirt. Loads of different options on the market. I went with a couple of recommendations for the Montaigne Featherlight Smock. It keeps off um, short, sharp showers and the wind and um, mist and fog. Excellent. Very happy I invested in one of those. Uh, if you're ill walking, I suggest a windproof top, regardless of the mate you go for. Other side, on my last trip, I was trying to put the tent up and my um, hand kept slipping on the pole. So I thought, well, I might, I might have to look into some um, grippy gloves. Um, I, do in, I do a light wrap gear, I've found these when I went to the toy store and they go outdoors. Um, Phantom, if wrap, Phantom grip gloves, you can see the palms on them, how sticky they are, going to be great for the walkie poles and for putting my tent up, things like that. So I thought I'd invest, I've always had Thinsulate gloves, very basic gloves, so I thought I'd treat myself and get a, a nice pair. Um, for water, I was asked about why I didn't have the soya this time, if I had any problems with it. No, if I have hydration bladders, in case they fail, I like to have a bottle with me. So if I take the hydration um, bladders, I'll take the travel tap. If I'm not taking the hydration, I'll take two Nalgene bottles and the soya system. These are the ultralights, they're very hard to find these. Um, if anyone can find one of these, I'd like to know I'd like another pair. Um, but the Vivid colours, again safe, green and red for collected water, things like that, so always keep, good to keep handy. Um, so in the top, things I want to say, I've got the Nalgene bottles, I'll take the soya. Um, this is a copy of a Millbank bag, 
All it is is heavy cotton canvas sewn to the shape of a large sock. That's all it is. Once the water, the cotton absorbs the water, it expands, therefore filtering out the water that is going through. Um, all filtration systems have a life expectancy dependent on the clarity of water. If I can take 10 minutes to clean it with this before it goes into here, I'll do it. I'm in no rush. Um, I could sit admiring the view while this is all going taking place. It doesn't bother me at all. So those I can I, I drink a lot of water on the move, so those are always handy, those kind of things. Um, you'll see my jacket failed me. So I've gone back to the trusty Gore-Tex. Army Gore-Tex. I've had a DPM one for eight years, never let it drop in. Um, what I didn't like about them is the hood. These are literally like Gandalf the Grey. It comes literally right over you this far. So in my last video, um, Wakey George Bus Pass Camper, you said, well, you can mod them. I glued mine. And I thought, well, what a great idea. And even after that, he sent me an email of just how he did his. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to try that. And I have done. So I'll show you the quick. And I've done. So you probably saved me over, well over £100. See you know how much I've done it there? Pinned it with some storm seal glue, excellent glue. Um, and then put a stitch in it just to hold it. And then same again on the sides. Folded it underneath itself three times. That's how much I've had to take it up. And now it looks like this. This is how we start shooking it down. I can put it on, have it quite well vented. This is a shell jacket, but if the wind starts, I need to keep it off my face. How about that? Great fitting hood now. Thanks again, George. Absolutely brilliant. I can't believe I didn't think on it myself, but it just takes that little bit, don't it, from your subscribers. And uh, a great saving. Very happy with this now. Couldn't care less about the DPM, the camouflage. I really could care less about what people think about the look of it. It's there to do a job. And, it, and, and the Gore-Tex does it very well. Right, let's move on quick. Let's get through it. This one first, I'll just show you this. It's got a nice security pocket here. I keep a metal... Well, it's titanium spoon and two sporks. Really don't use this, definitely not in the pan anyway. Um, but it's good to have backups and options, very lightweight, so I keep those there. Keep them nice and clean. The wallet, very lightweight. If I'm going so far and I don't want to walk it back, I can have some notes in here so I can jump on a train or public transport. Uh, I've got some spare Oasis tablets. I've got a tick key that, um, what's his name, Terry, T-Camps, um, give me the idea to take that, a tick key, always good, especially when I'm in the area where there's deer, so thanks T, he probably knows no introduction, but T-Camps, excellent channel, I recommend you go and look for him, I'll put his name up and his link in the description, your work's excellent mate, keep it up, um, so yeah, notes, tick key, spare Oasis tablets, I've got um, a double Fresnel lens 20 mag and some coins for like I say, public transport. Good to keep that so I'm not keeping all my bank cards and things like that. And then um, overnighters, I'm a scruff and I don't take these but over two or three nights, toothbrush and a two-in-one toothpaste and mouthwash. Okay so what I think I'll do now is lay everything out and just show you exactly what's in this now. Um, and then just take you bit by bit which is which. So I'll do that now, turn you around on the floor probably. Be okay, easier. so first, Fizan compact poles, very lightweight. I wanted basically as light as I could get, but metal. And these are what came up. So these have been excellent. Just on the bottom here, I've got some um, intensity grade high vis tape. It doesn't impede on the uh, the mechanism or anything like that so if I mean I am in trouble these can be used basically as ones these reflect very well high vis tape found on eBay but it's pretty expensive stuff but one roll up for last year for all your kit um, first tarps I've been through just about every type you can get um, now I'm trying to shed weight not only for walking long distances but the impact it has on my knee 
got a bad knee if you're not familiar with my channel before um, two operations so I'm really trying to cut down weight now and I think a bivy bag camping is going to be the way I'm really going to try and push to um, get sorted so uh, on the bivy bag camping video I used the Siltarp 1 I bought the Siltarp 2 so I can have full coverage in wet weather um, so I've gone with the Siltarp 2 the, for, for setting up the tarp Dyneema 2mm Also, if you ever need line locks, you see that um, sliding cobra we've landed video I did. Also good for line locks, these. Um, you can have a look at that. It's just some basic tent, three hold guy lines for tightening, um, and the carabiners for attaching on different points of the help kit clips. Very cheap and very lightweight those. Very happy with those. I've got, uh, sent a few of them out to friends. Um, also, again, help kit. They seem to do the very good stuff a bit cheaper than everybody else. So, I've got titanium pegs from help kit. There's ten there. I've put changed this with Dyneema. They don't absorb as much water, so that's why I take it. They can start to smell when you've got too much water, especially in paracord. And then I've got four extra long, extra strong pegs. I forget what these are called, I'll have to put it on screen but they are like Y beam tent pegs very strong and very good for when it's windy and they're also half the weight of these not a chance to use these yet, they are very heavy, very bulky um, still trying to justify them really, I've got two extra ones but for now those ones are doing the job very well clean up very well so we'll see how we get on with that set up, it's still a work in progress there's a bed Exped Sinmat 7, medium, ultralight 7, and a lot lighter and a lot more compact than the 9 long and wide I was using. I've also, it came with it, a deal with it, it's got the inflatable bag so I'm not blowing condensation in there. The bivy bag is a Rab Alpine bivy, it's an event material, I'm not too sure about the material yet, I need to have extended use with it, but I have got a backup which is the British Army Gore-Tex. Also an MTP, same as my Gore-Tex jacket. Um, we'll see how we get on with that. It's a lot lighter than the Army Bivy, which is why I've decided to go with it. It was an eBay purchase, um, very cheap, uh, almost a third the price that they are new, so I'm happy with that for the price. I can sell it on probably for more than, more than what I got it for. The bag is a wrap. Neutrino Endurance 400 XL. This was an eBay purchase, and if I told you what I got it for, brand new, you won't believe me, but trust me, I got it for less than a third of what they cost. Um, I, I don't know where I'd be without eBay. That's a superb bag, and also keeping that within the um, bivy bag also traps a bit more air, and you can get down to about. It's good to about zero, it says, but I think I'm going to try and push it with the different down setups like jackets and trousers. Um, inside that, always with down products, I'd recommend uh, a sleeping bag liner just to keep your bodily sweat and any um, greases or anything like that off your bag. It take, you don't want to be washing it really as long as you can. So, a good sleeping bag liner. This one's a silk one, there's loads available. A seat for when I want to sit down on a rock or anything like that, just protect any clothing I might be wearing. This is a very basic seat. I throw a grommet in myself, a cord. And a clip, I can clip it to my belt or my trousers so when I stand up, if it's really windy, boom, and it takes off, it's not going anywhere. Pretty good idea, I thought that, and probably going to be selling them and charging you 10 quid for the chuffs. But that's what I did. A very basic grommet kit you can get for a fiver, and they're very useful for all sorts of things. So, um, pretty good uh, seat that, no problems with that. So, that's the basic setup. Changeable, obviously, would be. Um, for snow maybe, I don't know how I'm going to get on with this yet, it's, very, it's been very good so far but I don't know how it's going to be in the very cold weather, I have got the 9 so we'll see how it goes and of course I can go with the Rab 900, this is the 400 I can go up to a 900 for the very cold weather but I'll see how I get on with this and the different clothing so that's my um, basic sleep setup. I've changed my out kit Philo jacket, it wasn't I didn't get the right size, I really should have got an XL but I got the large and it, it just didn't sit right. 
So I sold that and see what I could get for my money before I bought another Philo. Very much rec recommended, they're a very good jacket. But I managed to twig onto one of these. This is a Montane Black Ice. It's actually a box wall jacket, which is considerably better than the um, stitch through jackets. Um, you'll have to go into it if you want to know the ins and outs about stitch through and box wall. Just type it in Google, you'll find out what the difference is. But in short, these are much more um, insulative. Actually, I reckon the right name is the right word. So I put that in there. This is an app kit. Um, I think it's a five litre. 5 litre bag, sits in there really nice, really robust to keep it nicely protected and dry. Um, Montaigne Black Ice, another eBay, and I got it for 62 and I think they're over £200. So um, honestly I'm not lying about these prices, I really do get some awesome bargains, I'm very lucky. Um, secondly, this is, that's for when it really turns cold, just in case at night. This is more of an inter intermediate one, I think you've seen before on my, uh, on my videos. First of all, the Jack Wolfskin Atmosphere Down Trousers, awesome trousers, and the Jack Wolfskin Zen XT Jacket, it's a bit like a Michael Art jacket, um, awesome, I really, really love it, it's, it's excellent, it's really not cold enough to use daily yet, it's that good, but hoping to use it more and more, up on the hills when the wind's biting it drops cold, that's a great system to just sit and be comfortable in. Um, Base layers are merino wool, there's loads of different brands and ones out there. These are Red Ram merino wool base layers and I've also got a, a merino wool buff. Great for keeping your arms covered um, from mosquitoes and things like that. The buff you can put over your head and then put another one on so you, you really don't suffer with mosquitoes. If you do, like our poor friend Eddie, <laughs> seems, to, seems to be on every video he's getting battered by him but um, just a basic hat and a mosquito and it'll keep them off. Um, very lightweight, it's, it's worth having something like that, you don't want to be um, getting bothered by them. And then a, a, this is an MSR pack towel, it's just a, a microfiber towel, great for rubbing down your tent um, on the outside if it's been raining or the inside if you've got condensation. Same with the tarps, just rubbing them down and then you can put them in your, in your bag a lot less wet than what they would have been. So, um, and also if it's windy you can rub them down first and then they've got much better chance of drying out if you just rub them down with one of those. Very lightweight and you can wring them out and they're almost dry, the, the, uh, that, that was a really good one. That's an MSR pack towel but loads of different price ranges and brands and all sorts. So, um, for sitting comfortable at night, at this time of year I have got some even better stuff. Um, I've got uh, some severe arctic style jacket and trousers which you may see depending on if it gets cold enough this year and I've also got some down booties um, to go with these and some endurance, I've got some rab endurance mitts um, for it, when it gets Baltic when it's really cold so but for now um, my basic setup this is what will this is what will come with me okay for stoves I've recently been asked about some um, gear this is a definite recommendation bloody thrilled with this thing um, MSR Whisper Light Universal they were great with a gas canister something like this it's also got the stand so you can tip it upside down the reason for doing that is when it gets cold apparently it's better for the gas to be upside down like this um, I'm sure there's loads of things you can read and reviews and stuff but I believe it um, if I can extend the life of the gas by doing this you know it's, it's there anyway um, but why I do like this, I've said quite a few times probably, is this big ring and it's very adjustable. I prefer to heat my food in the pan rather than boil it. I think it takes far too long to get your food hot by boiling in the bag. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, maybe not, but you know, that's well, we're as choices, aren't we? We all do a thing the wrong way. Um, when it when it gets really cold, you can just change the adapter on that and hook up the fuel bottle and use petrol or... Coleman fuel and things like that. There's a guy did a review on the new one and the old one. And the old one, I think he said he had for 15 years and it was still going strong. So that was one of the things I looked at before of buying this. Thrilled with it. Very, very happy. Okay. Um, this is my stove. Well, I'll just show you these first. Um, SE Azula. I've got the windshield in here. It's quite sharp on the edges. This is why I've got in the heavy Cordura bag and the um, I've got two strikers in there the one that Ant gave me um, one on the Yessi Azula 
Um, I've got a lighter within this now. I'll show you. There's a little bag here in, in, the, in the top. What have I got in there? Oh, so I'll light it and the um, maintenance kit. So any little faults or anything, any spring holes or anything, I can change it. But from what I read, there's very little can go wrong on these things. It's just got seals and grease and things in there. So it's those two. And this one, I've just got uh, some food. I've got um, two heavy, quite heavy meals. I've got two, look what we found, meals and two rices in there. This was in there when I weighed it as well. So just give you an idea. Pot system. This is an help kit. Mighty pot. Titanium pot, um, 13, 50 millilitres. Top can be used as a frying pan for maybe a couple of sausages, not much in there, but I don't think you'll get one of um, the badder lads' steak or anything like that. Um, just very little to go wrong, squeeze and put it on, and then fold out. Handles got a, a like a silicon cover on them, so they're not going to burn your hand. Some people say um, things stick on titanium. If you're having stickage problems, you're cooking way too hot. That's my my um, observation on this. I have had some st stick before when I was using the pocket rocket, when I just had one ring in the middle it started sticking. Once I've started using the whisper light on a lower heat with a wider ring, never had a problem with any kind of stickage. So that's there. Um, a microfiber towel, a very cheap one. And so this, this is a Primus Titec pot. Again, with the covers, I had a, a Vargo uh, titanium pot. Come to lift it up and scalded my fingers, really burnt and bad. So if you're looking for titanium, make sure it's got one of these um, kind of protective silicon bands on it. In there, sugar, decent tea bags. Don't drink milk anymore, so now I can start drinking um, tea, some decent teas and some decent coffee. That's uh, Nescafe Alterica coffee, it's really gorgeous. So that's quite a lot in there. Tight brims, tight tip cup, and inside that, the Vargo titanium camping mug. Excellent, this. Um, one thing you can notice with the titanium gear is you can cool down quicker than steel and stainless steel, but um, personally, I drink it before it gets cold, so it's not really a problem for me. Um, they nest very well inside each other, so I'm very happy with this system. I don't see any reason to change it in the near future. So. Uh, I'll put that away and I'll just take you on to the next thing. Okay, so the last three is definitely lighting. You know, I spend a lot of time out. I don't go inside a tent at night. I like to sit out, which is why I like good, uh, good clothing, very good high quality clothing and waterproofs. But when you are moving around, a decent head torch. This has been faultless. Petzl Ticket XP2. Excellent torch. That well, well worth every penny I paid for it. Um, spare batteries for that, spare batteries for the lantern. This is an Alp Kit, um, what's it called? Yeah. Glow, Alp Kit Glow 170. They also do a 190, I think, but um, light, even lighter, a dim, and a flashing. Of course, can be used as a torch as well. Pretty good little system that. Hang it with a basic carabiner, that one's a silver from an old compass. Um, all you need really. Something for lighting up your space at night, just for doing the camera work basically, and then something on my head for looking around, which is a head torch. Um, it's as complicated as lighting gets for me. First aid, basically um, ibuprofen, like I've said, um, a, a bit of my medication that I need to take. Um, some Dettol antiseptic cream for any uh, rashes, maybe burns or anything. And for anything serious, um, some instant crazy glue. It's, it's basically super glue, but it's got a certain chemical in it that's um, that you can use on your skin. Basically, you're not supposed to, but um, the uh, the basic super glue has got a chemical in it that's really not good for you. That's not got it in it. It's called crazy glue. I'll try and put a link for that in the description. 
So um, I've never needed any kind of medic any uh, first aid when I've been out. Basically, ibuprofen. Um, you know, aches and pains in my knee and my shoulders and things like that get rid of it really quick. A few bandages, but basically, um, I just met do. Um, never needed it. I'd prefer to put much more effort into preventing any kind of first aid. There's always that time, and maybe I'll change my mind, but until then, you crack on with what you've got. And then, probably lastly, I think now, um, a trowel, Coglands travel towel, very basic, cleans up well. Um, some toilet roll and wet wipes. Always go with decent wet wipes, I like the Pampers ones. Um, last thing you want when you're out there is a breach. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, some decent toilet paper, get some good stuff, not the cheap rubbish. You know, it's going to save you in the long run. And of course, some um, um, hand sanitizer, basic setup. Very simple, also wet wipes are good for wiping the back of your neck, things like that. When you're out, you get more dirt, you seem to get more dirt on the back of your neck than anywhere, and it's going to rub off in your nice clothing and things like that. So, just a decent wipe round in the mornings if you're unable to have a proper wash, always a good idea. Right, so I think that's about it. Just have a, a, a quick brief, and that'll be it, I think. Okay, so that's the setup I use when I go bivy bag camping. Um, a few tweaks here and there on the basically the clothing and the sleeping bag for when it gets a bit colder but I really would like to um, really get into the bivy bag camping to try and reduce that weight on my pack. Um, the only other things obviously is a few snacks on me, um, boiled sweets, I like humbugs especially. Um, for navigation it's always been the uh, Ordnance Survey weatherproof maps and a silver compass. Good to keep, I, uh, I look at the map and basically follow the land. Um, uh, visual bearings I think it's called but um, it's good to know where you are in case you get hurt a grid reference, you need a good accurate grid reference for any emergency services or friends that might be in the area some things like that so um, preferable for me to have this kind of setup which is basically faultless uh, rather than the GPS's that can maybe be faulty plus you need maybe some charging devices and things like that in the future to keep them running so that's the, been the basic setup for me and it works very well the only thing I'm looking at is a compact camera. So many requests and so much praise, it's just overwhelming. Um, so I would like to bring more videos. The camera I've got now is so bulky, I need to carry it in a, a bag and I can't have the strap because it rubs my neck. So I end up carrying it. But when I'm carrying it, I ain't got both hands free for poles. So that's why I don't produce so many videos. It's just so much hassle. And um, what I'll be doing now is like I said, getting a compact camera so I can bring more um, more videos and just have it in my top pocket maybe or something like that. Um, so that's about it. That's my setup. That's my future plans. Hopefully try and get you more videos with a new system. And if you found anything helpful in this video, let me know. If you want to know any details of what I've thought about anything in the kit, just ask. Um, and hopefully it won't be too long before I'm showing you in action again. So hope you've enjoyed. Hope you got something from it. And uh, see you on the next one. Thanks.